Hello everyone, this is Rifat al from the Islamic University of Gaza. Uh, this is uh, uh, basically our first scene on Shakespeare's Hamlet. Uh, we had a brief introduction into Shakespeare and into Hamlet. And at the end of this class, I'll give you the chance to, especially those who first posted uh, quotes about critics praising Hamlet, the character or Hamlet, uh, the play. Today we'll finish uh, scene one, which we started uh, last time. But I want to remind you if you still, uh, uh, but again, you don't have to memorize this. Later on, you will, everything will be so clear. We basically have Hamlet, his dad, and his mom. His mother is Gertrude. His father is a King Hamlet, old Hamlet. And then his uncle is Claudius. So we have here four people, the son, the, the father, the mother, the uncle. And then we have another family, Polonius. Polonius has a daughter called Ophelia. Hamlet and Ophelia are lovers. They are in love. And Laertes, his son, Polonius' his son and Ophelia's uh, brother. Where is the mom? We don't know. Probably we can talk about that uh, later on. So these are basically the main uh, uh, families, the two main families. But there is uh, Horatio, who is Hamlet's friend. There are two of Hamlet's uh, childhood friends, Rosencrantz and Guildenstern. Uh, we'll also be introduced today to another family from outside Denmark. This family, this play, the, the play is actually Hamlet, the prince of Denmark, is usually described as the Dane, Dane from Danish, the, uh, the adjective. We talk about Fortin Brass. But Hamlet's father, some of you guessed interesting things last time. It was really interesting of you how to think of how Shakespeare would start a, part, a play like this. Some of you guessed, right? Uh, uh, he didn't start from when he was alive and then he was killed, probably this is going to be boring, or it could be another totally different play. He starts from the middle and I'll talk about this. And we'll discover that Hamlet's father is uh, coming back from the dead. How, why, where, we'll see today. We commented on two extracts. The first page, the opening uh, part of the opening scene, in Shakespeare, the opening scene is always significant. Everything is significant, but because he wants to prepare, uh, to, he wants to meet the expectations of the audience. He wants to prepare the minds of the audience also to what to come, to foreshadow things. So scene one in traditional drama like this usually prepares us for what to come. And you brilliantly guess the things from just looking at this. You expected what this is probably going to be about and what things Shakespeare is, is doing this. And then we move to this extract. And here I'm summarizing what we did last time. So the opening part of the opening scene can be summarized in the quote from the book you have, all is not well in this play. That this is not going to be a, a, a comedy. That this is probably going to be a, a tragedy. It's dark at night somewhere in a castle, some guards. So probably there are, there are guards here guarding the castle, the king protecting, there could be an external threat. And the weather is not only cold or very cold, it's bitter cold. There are many questions. I'm not sure, did you count the questions in scene one? Did anybody count the questions? Or the question mark? Uh, 60 questions. How many? Five. No, the whole scene. I think 17. Yeah, pro yeah. I, many people say it's 17, but I counted, I only found 16 questions in the whole scene, which is interesting. And we've seen there is a lot of uncertainty, you know, uh, uh, because uh, who's there? He, he should have said, God save the queen. How long live the king? Uh, giving the answer. But he's like, God, uh, long live the king. He's, he's uncertain about 
maybe he doesn't like the king, he doesn't like saying this. It's like when you give somebody a password that includes an insult to him or to her. I had a friend who would usually change the password of the internet at home. And his uh, brothers would be, what's the password? And he would like, go to hell. What's the password? Go to hell. And then at the end of the day, the word, uh, the phrase, go to hell is actually the, the password. So, so there is prose here. The little bit of poetry in the opening part doesn't flow like uh, we are used to in Shakespeare. Uh, the iambic pentameter, like you said. So there are many fragments, not full sentences. And basically, um, some people will say the most important thing in scene one is the ghost. That's true. But probably equally important, if not more important, is the absence of Hamlet, the title character. He's not there. He's not, he doesn't just simply show up face to face with the, character, with the audience. And then there is the reference to the absent thing. It has it has this thing appeared again. It's but our fancy. Tush, tush, will not appear. What is this thing? Again, creating suspense. They dramatizing this even more. In media stress, please remember this, memorize this, and use it as a fancy thing when you write. This is a Latin uh, uh, phrase expression which means in the middle. Most great literary works begin in the middle. If you're studying with Dr. Akram, some of you, you will see that at the end of the day, nothing begins. We have already begun. Everything has already begun. Where do you begin? Like really, where do you begin? Because there's always something before. So this play starts in media stress should be media, not media. Okay, I'll have to fix this because I want to be as accurate as possible. So it starts in the middle. It doesn't start when the king was, you know, happily married, etc. And then somebody conspires against him, he dies, or he's killed. You know, it's going to take a lot, a lot of time. It's going to become boring. So he starts from this interesting place. Remember, the soldiers are dedicated. So those people working uh, the bad jobs, the horrible jobs, or unless you know, being a soldier is good, it's, it's, it's something to be proud of. But those people are, despite the cold, despite the fear, they're still guarding and they're still awake, fully awake. Who's there? He doesn't uh, trust easily. He's doing his job. Both of them are doing their job. But what I love more here, we'll see this later on, is that this is a society based on evidence evidence-based society. So we la later we're going to learn that the ghost appeared twice to Bernardo and Marcellus, twice. But still they needed, they didn't go to, oh my God, there's a ghost, oh my God, there's a ghost. These are smart people. The whole society, the, the construct, the mentality of the society is based on finding evidence. So what did they do? They go ask Horatio. Because Horatio is a scholar. He's a credible person, trustworthy. He is Hamlet's friend. And he also goes to Wittenberg, to university with Hamlet. So they, they go to Horatio. I don't know how they know him, etc. But Horatio is presented as higher than them in the social rank. We don't know much about him, but we know that he is a scholar, a university student. And look at his, he's, he's skeptical, you know? Tash, tash. It's not only at, at the beginning, it is, it, is, it is your fancy, your image. It's a figment of your imagination. But when he speaks, it's like, Hazuhadi, tash, tash. We'll go back to it later on. Tash, tash. It will not appear. It's only a figment of your imagination. Very confident because scholars, scientists don't believe in ghosts. Although in the Elizabethan age, the early uh, uh, um, uh, Renaissance, the, uh, Renaissance, early modern uh, uh, England, people believed, did believe in spirits and ghosts, etc. So all of a sudden they're talking and uh, uh, Horatio is coming them down and the ghost enters. And I'll come back to this later on 
in this beautiful, uh, interesting thing. Just let me just, okay, I wanted to do this, to add it here, to see where enter goes. Let's give Doctor, me. can I ask a question? I'll give you time for that, uh, everybody. Okay. And we, probably we can talk about this later on in more detail here. This is from your text, uh, the part about, about the ghost entering for the first time. And this is amazing in so many ways from again, from Shakespeare, how he did what he did here. So the talking probably, uh, even the gods who saw the, the, uh, the ghost twice, you know, uh, probably, okay, maybe, it was because we were sleepy and etc. So Hiroshi will says, "Well, sit down. Look at the dramatization here. Sit down. Sit. Don't worry. Sit down. Let's sit down. And let us hear. Let us hear Bernardo speak of this. And then Bernardo says he wants to tell exactly what happened last night of all, when yond." same star that's westward from the pole when the star was in this particular place in the sky had made his had made his course to illume his refers to the star to illume to illuminate to lighten that part of heaven where now it burns marcellus myself the bell then beating one it was at one o'clock so he just look at this this is drama remember People are more interested in storytelling. Sorry, more, more interested in seeing, in action, in dramatization than in storytelling. Although there is a lot of storytelling here. It would be boring if the play two people are, are on the stage and like, I was sitting there and then the ghost came and then I ran after the ghost and then the ghost ran away and then it came back again. So Shakespeare, remember, and that's the most fascinating thing about drama, not only Shakespeare, but drama, Shakespeare. Most of uh, the plays were performed during the day. During the day, at, at you know, like uh, probably at afternoon, when still was light, wasn't dark. So how can how does Shakespeare convey this idea of darkness of cold to people? Simple. People start for example. Remember, you know, when somebody is yawning. Everybody yawn. You're like, oh, try this at home today when you finish this. Like, try to yawn, and everybody's going to be yawning. It's like infectious in a way, contagious. So he creates this dramatic, interesting, dramatic scenes where people act and perform rather than speak, or I would say, in addition to the speaking. So, which is better for us as audience? Somebody telling us he saw a ghost describing a ghost or the ghost entering. It's easy. But at the time of Shakespeare, it was tough. So he said, he's like, the bell, then beating one, and then enter ghost. This is part of the, uh, uh, nobody says enter ghost. This is part of the stage direction. And imagine this situation. When a spooky somebody, a, a character would get into the stage, frightening everybody. And then Marcellus, peace, break the old flock, where it comes from? Peace means like, oh my God, like calm down, like, oh, like look there, you don't have to speak anymore. In the same figure, like, so, because, and this is beautiful, Shakespeare published this, uh, sorry, wrote this to be performed, not to be published or staged wrote all his plays and all playwrights of that time. So even now, if, even if you don't watch, you're not watching the play, you can still imagine. So one of them says, in the same figure, like the king that's dead. The dead king? Which dead king? Who is dead? There is a king that is dead? Ah, maybe that explains why somebody is sick at heart, why there is doubt, why they are guarding, why somebody says, uh, uh, long live the king in a, in a question form. Maybe the, the new king is not as cool, as good, as loved. And then, look, how, to, again, there is very little stage direction. 
So Shakespeare doesn't say, enter Horatio, who is a scholar who studies at the University of Wittenberg in Germany along with Hamlet. Somebody else says this, frames this. Thou art a scholar, speak to it, Horatio. Ah, yalla ya al-alim, yalla ya abul mafhumiya. Ma shifta la batlaqi hadan garayabkum, yalla ya al-alim, yalla ya al-alim. You're studying English, translate, you're studying translation, translate. Looks it not like the king, mark it, Horatio. Look, that's the thing. Most like, look at, now, so far, um, I would love to see Horatio again. I, 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 when I watch this play, I watch it very slowly. Like I keep watching and watching the scene again and again. It's brilliant. It's everything is ready. If you are a producer, you will not take a lot of time uh, to, you know, to, to decide what's going to happen in the stage because Shakespeare is preparing everything for you. Where is Horatio? He's silent. Maybe uh, uh, Horatio is going to run away. Okay, so looks not, looks it not like the king. Market Horatio, most like Horatio says here later on, it harrows me with fear and wonder. Oh my God. Harrow, yeah, and it's more than frightened. Lamagulak haja harrowing, like terrorizing. It harrows me with fear and wonder. So there is fear, oh my God, oh my God. So he's a scholar, but he's not a soldier like those two soldiers that saw it twice, and this is the third time. And wonder. Wonder, like who's there? Oh my God, I am a scholar. And I think there that ghosts don't appear, don't exist, and they do. I can see it. The three of us can. It would be spoke to question it, Horatio. Talk to it, Horatio. Question it. And then Horatio tries to speak to uh, uh, to uh, the ghost, but it doesn't reply. What art what thou that usurped? Usurp, yani, to occupy this time this time of night together with that fair and warlike form in which the majesty of buried denmark did sometimes march by heaven i charge thee speak speak look at this beautiful highlight here he admits that oh my god he is wearing warlike form in which the majesty buried, majesty of Denmark, buried Denmark did sometimes march. This is the, the clothes, the, 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 the look, the uniform that the king of Denmark, he didn't say here, king, Denmark, كان ملك حسين زمان يقول نحن الأردن. الملك دائما يعتبر أنه هو البلد. هذا بالإنجليزي بيسميه سنكدكي. مجاز مرسل علاقته المكانية الجزئية الكلية إلى آخره. And but I love how he's courageous here. Like I charge thee, I order thee, I command thee, speak. And it doesn't speak. Marcellus explains this because it goes away, it keeps moving. It is offended. See, it talks away. And Horatio then stay, speak, speak. I charge thee, speak. Now it depends on the producer how much fear and confidence and courage you would make Horatio do this. It can be performed in a hundred ways. Is it like, oh, speak, speak, I charge thee, speak. Or like, speak, speak, I charge thee, speak. Or probably a mixture of fear and, and courage. So it's gone. And now, remember, we started in the middle. We need somebody to tell us what happened before, what happened to the king, the king that just has been buried. As audience, we're wondering, creating suspense here. What's going on here? Why did the king die? Why was he buried in his, you know, warlike form? And then Horatio tells the story. And I love this, how Shakespeare gives this storytelling to somebody who is credible, trustworthy. Some people presented as also courageous. And he tells the story about our last king. He's talking about King Hamlet, old Hamlet, whose image even but now appeared. اللي ظهرت صورته الآن was, as you know, by Fortin Brass or Norway. So we, we are told here that there has been, there, were, there was a war between Norway and Denmark, and King Hamlet managed 
to kill, to slay, look at this. مش مش بس kill, to slay, يذبح, to slaughter Potem Brass. And then Hamlet, because remember in the, in the past, sometimes the armies would fight, but sometimes the two kings would fight. If one king kills the other, he wins the battle and he takes whatever they want to take. So he, uh, 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 old Hamlet took uh, uh, a piece of land from Norway and killed the king. Which means, look at how, how Horatio is telling us that the king is, look at this. This is a king who's a fighter, a king who doesn't stay back at home in the castle and sends the soldiers to die, to be slaughtered. No, he fights and he stands, he spearheads the, the battle, in which our valiant Hamlet, look at this description again. For so this side of our known world esteemed him, did slay this Fortinbras. He killed the king of Norway. Now, sir, young Fortinbras. So there is old Hamlet, there is young Hamlet, there's old Fortinbras, there is young Fortinbras. Look at again how Horatio is describing Fortinbras. He is unimproved. Do you know something improved? Any good? Civilized. Unimproved, uncivilized. Savage. Savage. Backward. Metal, hot and full. He's like, yeah, like ahwaj, you know, rash, tasarra, ma'ish. Half in the skirts of Norway here, there, shark up a list of lawless resolutes. He has chosen a group of lawless soldiers, fighters. Again, remember, Norway is the enemy now. He's framing, framing Norway as you know, in a, in a negative way. He's telling us the, the young Fortinbras, the prince, is, is just paying money, food, giving food to the soldiers. Lawless resolutes for food and diet to some enterprise. Interesting framing. Hamlet is presented as a fighter, strong. Fortinbras was killed. His son is is, is described as unimproved, metal, hot, and, and full. And then when it comes again, uh, the, uh, uh, the, descript, the, uh, the ghost comes again, and Marcellus describes, the language is more poetic, more beautiful than you can imagine now. It's getting, you know, we, we're getting into what Shakespeare usually does. Uh, if you studied Marlowe, Marlowe's play will almost always be poetic, highly sophisticated language. But with Shakespeare, he doesn't do this. He gives every scene, every character, every mood, a particular language uh, it deserves or he or she deserves. So it faded, I love this. I would love to see some of you translate this. It faded on the crowing of the cock. Ikhtafa, it, the ghost. Ikhtafa, عند صياح الديك, عند صوت الديك. So, some say that ever against that season comes wherein our Savior, our Savior, and Jesus Christ, the Messiah, the Munqiz, the Mukhalis, birth celebrated. Because it is said that Jesus was born at dawn, waqt al-fajr. So at this exact time, the spirits and the evil spirits and the ghosts, they run away. The bird of dawning, singeth all night long and then they say, no spirit dare stare abroad. The nights are wholesome. Then no planet strike, no fairy takes, nor witch hath power to charm. They can't have their power to charm and use magic against people. So hollowed and so gracious is that time. Beautiful description. So hallowed, sorry, and so gracious is that time. Waktu al-fajr, waktu al-subah is so gracious. And then Horatio, uh, uh, at the end, uh, 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 promises, uh, because it doesn't speak to him, and they say, they believe that if it comes to somebody, it will only speak to somebody. So if it is old Hamlet's ghost, it must need Hamlet to talk to. And Hamlet uses... Uh, some people consider this to be the most perfect iambic pentameter in all of Shakespeare. So have I heard and do in part believe it. So have I heard and do in part believe it. But again, look at how 
accurate Horatio is here. So have I had, and do in part believe it. He doesn't totally, completely believe it, just in part. Yeah, yani, okay, partially. Break we our watch up, then unfad, unfad, and by my advice, let us impart, impart, yani, till the news, impart what we have seen tonight unto young Hamlet. So he's mentioned here. For upon my life, this spirit, dumb to us, dumb, is meaning abla, dumb, akhras, dumb, dumb to us, will speak to him. Upon my life, and he's like swearing by his life, young Hamlet, for upon my life, this spirit dumb to us. I'll do some commentary here and give you the time. If, if somebody has a question, I can see so many of you commented here and there. You just go through these uh, brief ideas I just mentioned so you can uh, 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 tell me what you have in mind. So we've seen Marcella's description. This is from the book you have. Marcellus is the description of the dawn is one of the most beautiful passages in the whole play, especially if you are a morning person. Horatio's response has been called the most perfect line of blank verse in the English language. So have I heard and do in part believe it. The language of the play has transformed from the talk of weary soldiers, from the fragments, incomplete sentences, questions, the prose, clipped lines and hurried questions to an almost lyrical, musical, perfect, perfect poetry. So I repeat again, the setting, time, place, and weather. Late at night, the castle, bitter cold, begins with, with a question, and then there are so many other questions. It's economical. Everything is, 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 is significant and related. Mafish had a digression and, you know, Fragments. The verse at the beginning doesn't flow because there are broken rhythms there, the unease, the apprehension, the confusion. And we'll talk about framing in a bit. Most significantly, importantly, no Hamlet and there is a ghost. And there are unfinished stories, unfinished businesses. Why is the ghost back? What's going on? So in the first scene, but by the way, the whole scene can be a, a complete play, beautiful. Includes many things, okay? So the 16 questions, the, the who's there, the framing. I'll talk about framing in a bit. Framing, please, you know, if you know me, you know how, how much I like framing and I consider it to be important. Framing happens everywhere in life. When somebody tells you about somebody or something else, this is framing, whether positively or negatively. Remember in poetry, we, how John Donne was framed negatively. So, Horatio was framed to us as a scholar, as a good person to, to be trusted. But Horatio himself, he framed Hamlet and old Hamlet. He framed old Fortinbras and young Fortinbras, some positive, some negative. The language used, questions, no full sentences sometimes, mainly prose, you versus thou, we'll come to this uh, later on, and the, the ghost and no Hamlet. I, I'm not sure whether I should be doing this or not. If you like Friends and Joey, before I move to the uh, uh, last two uh, slides, I want you to watch this. Describe for Joey things you find in your refrigerator. Uh, you might as well just give us the points. <laughs> give me 20 seconds on the clock. Ready, go. You put this in your coffee. Uh, a spoon, your hands, your face. <laughs> it's white, paper, snow. A ghost! It's heavier than milk. A rock. A dog. The earth. You put this on a sandwich. Salami. Anchovies. Jam. It's white. Paper. Snow. A ghost! It's made from eggs. Chickens. Pass! Oh. You put this on a hamburger. Ketchup. Yes! Relish. Stop. Oh. Oh, time's up. Joey. Describe for Joey. Okay, I'm using this because some people make fun of Shakespeare. Every time there is something, he brings a ghost. He brings a ghost in uh, uh, Julius Caesar, uh, and he brings a ghost in uh, in Macbeth. And I think there are other plays where there are ghosts. So probably if you don't like ghosts. But again, listen, we'll talk about this next uh, uh, in scene three, act one. 
you don't have to take the ghost literally. The ghost could be metaphorically. Don't we, when sometimes, you know, our parents or grandparents die, but we still live by their advice and directions? So sometimes we still live in the shadow, in the ghosts of our parents and grandparents. So Hamlet, the play, like all plays, was staged in the broad daylight, in the middle of the afternoon, sometimes outside. So the audience, Shakespeare had to do something to help the audience perceive and see, understand the scene as taking place at night, called battlement, sometime after midnight, the time when ghosts are most likely to appear. So he would use a language in, in a particular way and the actors will be directed to behave in a like, oh, you know. Horatio is presented as a credible source and a trustworthy scholar. He does all, most of the, 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 the framing. The opening scene foreshadows and creates suspense in an attempt to achieve the utmost impact on, on the audience. There is a lot of unknown, unfinished business, unfinished stories here. Norway seems to be preparing to invade Denmark. Young Fortinbras is preparing a war. So yeah, maybe they, that's why there are soldiers guarding. The men believe that spirits usually mean trouble. And they believe that this particular spirit may either be a ghost of their dead king or an evil spirit disguised as a king. Not, nothing is certain. So this could be the king who wants to convey a message, or it could be a, an evil spirit disguising as the king. The soldiers are called and tired and afraid, but they are brave. This is framing. Framing, this is the definition of framing, is the process to promote certain narratives and challenge those promoted by other groups in the society. If you have, you believe in certain ideas, these are narratives. So you try to convince her, she tries to convince you. In drama, framing, happens when an absent character is introduced to us by other characters, either positively or negatively. It was Horatio who introduced old Hamlet, old Fortinbras, and young Fortinbras, and a little bit of young Hamlet. So this usually appears before the character comes to stage, on stage. So we don't know anything about this. Somebody tells us what, what to expect, trying to, when in Mushkila Hanenuhna, we usually tend to believe this, but you have to be careful. Not everything said should be believed. So the audience and the readers are usually warned not to take the frames for granted. You have to be careful. You have to judge for yourself. Hamlet is framed as young, to us as young, and the kind of guy that you have duty towards. So his friends trust him. They want to tell him what they saw. So giving a positive thing about him. Old Hamlet is framed as a valiant fighter a mighty king who would sacrifice himself for his country, and he's dead. Young Fortinbras is framed as inexperienced, reckless of unimproved metal and hot and fall, who is leading an army of mercenaries. Is any mercenaries? Murtazaka. Yaqud Jaish min al Murtazaka. They're not fighting for the country, they're fighting for uh, the money. Sorry. Before we move, please tell me what you want to say. If you have a question, if you have a comment, because I have uh, uh, just uh, one thing to do now. Go on, Ahmed, yalla. Okay, Doctor, uh, in line 35, uh, there is a space, uh, like, there is a space, then he wrote the line. Uh, I, I don't know why this, this is uh, happening here. I think it's for the sake of the layout. I don't, th I don't think this is from Shakespeare. I promised yes. last year to check, but I didn't know why. I don't know why. Because other box, you will not see the same space here. Okay, one yep. more. Yes. Go on. Um, um... Why does the ghost appear uh, more than twice to the soldiers instead of Hamlet, if the ghost actually needs Hamlet? Uh, yeah, thank you very much. I did, this didn't come to my mind before. Why not Hamlet and directly? I don't know. 
But again, this is Shakespeare doing what he wants to do. He wants this to be outside in the open. Maybe if he shows to Hamlet at home, his mom is going to see it, his father, his, his uncle, you know? Uh, I don't know. But Maybe, uh, why, um, why, why the, the castle outside? But Shakespeare is doing a, a, a great job here with the, the opening, and this is what I care about. This is the perfect opening to this play where everything is, is, is framed and introduced to us. He creates foreshadowing, he creates suspense. If the play opens with Hamlet, you know, like smoking or, you know, playing video games or, you know, having fun or crying somewhere and then the ghost appears, we will lose a lot of this dramatic uh, intensity of the play. But again, I, I'm not sure actually, I don't know. And I find it very interesting. Maybe Doctor you want to... Uh... Go on. Make it a true, a true uh, ghost. It is not uh, uh, what Hamlet himself made it a, a ghost. Because he, so I, I he makes the whole verse. I don't get you. Can you say it again? Can you explain? Um, that the soldiers. So uh, the ghost that he, uh, Shakespeare wanna us to to believe that it is a real a real ghost. Not Hamlet has himself, who made the the ghost to. Oh, okay. To, oh, oh, to that, thank you, thank you. We uh, this is a very good idea, a very good point. Thank you. Uh, when the ghost appeared to Macbeth and only Macbeth saw it, we saw we 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 guess that there's something wrong with him. He's hallucinating. He's imagining. But yeah, it is, he wants it has, us to believe even more because soldier number one, soldier number three two and soldier number three and Horatio so there are four people who saw it already but Hamlet uh, and then Hamlet is told about this so yeah yeah this could be it like to give more credibility to uh, 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 to the ghost more somebody some, something else other than the ghost yes doctor like I, I could yes. interpret it. go on yeah like I could interpret this um, ghost appearing to these two soldiers, maybe because they are, or were at least involved in Hamlet's father's murdering. And one, if one is guilty, if, if one is sinful, and he just committed something bad in the past, his mind keeps, you know, like flashbacking or, um, where's the word, recalling things related to the sin he did in the past. So maybe they were involved um, in a way or another in the murdering of Hamlet's father. And that's why it didn't show up to Hamlet himself because Hamlet is thinking of his father as something good, something he needs to seek revenge for the sake of him. And these two soldiers were um, at least um, correlated and in, in, in the crime committed towards Hamlet's father by, okay. by okay. you know, by the command of the, the, the now or the day okay. present king. That's a, that's a very excellent uh, point, Muhammad. Uh, that's true. Uh, they could be, you know, complicit in the murder, but again, we don't know that somebody is murdered, Muhammad. Don't, you know? Uh, Absolutely. Don't, don't, don't create uh, answers when we still don't have the questions. Nobody doubts anything about the, ki the, the, the king, what happened to him. But you, some of you know, because you have an idea about the story. Now, uh, uh, this issue still raises more questions. The first scene, the most significant thing about the first scene is to raise so many questions. Oh my God, a ghost, why a ghost? Ghost, I don't believe in ghosts. I don't believe in ghosts either. But take the ghost if you don't want to take, to suspend your disbelief, Zayma Coleridge girl. You need to take it as a metaphorical ghost of somebody's uh, uh, father, father's uh, ghost appearing or past or shadow or orders or command, etc. So again, the, the, the issue of the ghost raises more questions. And this is something that scene number one does. There are many questions, no answers, almost no answers are, are given, making it uh, a, a play about uh, questions and also about answers. But usually the answers are not easy to get. Not easy, not, it doesn't mean impossible. It means there will be so many people giving so many different answers one more maybe doctor because it's night and cold they are imagining the soldiers 
uh, imagining the, the things are not exist. Possible, but four people imagining the same thing is is tough. يكونوا الأربعة ماخذين نفس المخدرات maybe. Like all of us when we when we were children, like at but, night we. But you wouldn't see the same thing, the same. Exact we are imagining thing like imagining see, yeah. things that are not exist. Okay, something else, something other than the ghost. Can I, can I say uh, something about the ratio? But please, I don't want you to spoil things by bringing something from scene to no, act, no, no. react for. What we have here, we comment on. Yeah, okay. yeah, about Go this on. scene. Yeah. So, um, isn't the ratio is like uncertain? Um, his speeches are too long and the words are uh, too sophisticated and lyrical while he while he's, he he is still uh, under the the situation of being fearful and confused because of the ghost's uh, appearance so he uh, i think he has like um a, a, a rapid movement from um from saying short sentences and hurried questions into the most lyrical sentences uh, the thing that that's an excellent point to make also. Now look at this. Uh, the play moves from the opening, uh, erratic opening to a more smooth and poetic at the end. So this is the nature of things. So even, you know, you're talking about, uh, what's his name, Horatio, uh, um, but even Marcellus also had the same thing, the same experience. Look at this beautiful poetic blank verse. This is blank verse, blank verse because it's poetry. You can tell it's both because it begins with a capital letter, but you don't have a regular rhyme scheme at the end. So everybody is moving from one state of mind to the other. But don't forget, Horatio is a learned, educated, intellectual university scholar. So naturally, most often he would be speaking uh, more poetry than prose. But yeah, we, let's, let's watch this. Let's see how he talks later on. One more. Five. Smash. One more. Uh, before we go to the quote, we still have like uh, 15 minutes. These are questions that I will post with this video. These are optional questions. Uh, if you answer them, if you think about them, they help you and uh, uh, they will be considered but optionally and if you if you keep answering the questions i post with the with the lectures it, it gives a good impression about you and you need me to take a good impression about you so i'll post this and i'll ask you each one of you to, to to choose one question and comment on it to answer it so these are beautiful questions how does the opening scene create a, a mood of anxiety fear apprehension and confusion what is it that makes us ask so many questions? When do we do that generally? No, I'll, I'll remove this or I relate it to Hamlet. What is framing and who is framed to us in the first scene and how? What dramatic techniques does Shakespeare employ in the first scene? To what impact, why? Why does Francisco's claim he feels sick at heart remain unexplained? We don't know why, nobody asked. Why is the ghost described as majestical in line one, four, three, and then paradoxically like a guilty thing? So majestical and then guilty. And who's there? The opening line. Contextualized comment. How would you comment on, uh, on this? Now, uh, the second part, where is it? Doctor, the questions and the final exam will be like there or in the middle exam? Yep, now because the exams will be at university. So I expect you to, uh, okay, where is it? Can't find it. Okay, here it is. Yeah, you'll, you, you'll be expected to write a paragraph or anything, but it's too early to talk about exams. So what did they say about, about Hamlet? This is the task I gave you. Can you please, please try to uh, listen uh, to me? It's not because I, I want you to be blindly following what I say. Because you know, 
it's very crowded the whole the, the 60 minutes and then i need to prepare so many things so when i tell you give me one thing or one idea one critic this is too much for me and for you the second thing is i want you to always learn to be more specific and concrete يعني لو واحد حفظ لي one idea بكفيني أنا يعني لو حفظت one idea فتو أنا التاسك حكيت لكم تو على الجروب I want you to read one sentence and you know what a sentence is a group of words with at least one main clause one main verb that begins with a capital and ends with a full stop and tell me in no more than 20 seconds why you think it is interesting Because we only have 10 minutes and we have like 30 people or uh, uh, 20 people to, to speak. In my opinion, this is uh, the, the, the thing I like most about from William uh, Haz, uh, Haz, uh, Hazlitt. He's like, he wrote this like 200 years ago or so. Um, beautiful, long, but I'm not going to read it all. He says, it is in brief, it is we who are Hamlet. Like why he thinks that Hamlet is a masterpiece, a work of genius. Because there is a lot of Hamlet in us, a lot of us in Hamlet. Like he's suggesting that Hamlet is some kind of a real person. Sah, it's imagination, fictional character, literature. But his thoughts are our thoughts, his concerns, his fears, his hopes and dreams and battles and confusion and love and hate. Similar to, to ours. Asil, read the line and in brief tell me what is it that you like about it. Yes, doctor. Uh, shall I read all but ju or just I like the most? Also, don't say yes, doctor. Don't do introductions. Don't say you, you spent uh, 15 years reading about Shakespeare. Just read the line, one sentence, and tell me why it is. One sentence, every one of you. Okay, uh, I like um, how it might so easily have been ma manufactured into an ingema or basil, um, and then the basil the basil is sufficient pains where best wood could be completely taken to pieces and explained, but Shakespeare no, created no no I see just that why do you like that just one sentence I see. Okay, actually, I like it uh, because uh, it's beautiful to me that the blade seems to be like a secret or puzzle in which must be played or answered or answered through the blade and the characters are willing mm. to resolve this. Thank you. So maybe now with the too many questions in scene one, you, you, you understand this more. Huh? There's a puzzle here. Wafa, yeah. thank you, Asil. Wafa, not there. Amira. Not there. Yasser. Are you there? Lana. Nisma, are you there? Yes, doctor, I'm here. Go on. Okay, uh, I found this uh, quote quite interesting uh, for the fact that it's confused me a bit. Uh, to me, what makes uh, a character it's, uh, is it's a strength of will and patience, among other characters, for, of course, uh, which has, let's say, and his essay are not the key characteristics of making Hamlet the legendary character he is, but rather his uh, uh, thoughts. Hmm. This, uh, yes. Why do you like it? Uh, okay, uh, because this is, uh, you know, uh, make me read and analyze the Hamlet from my own point of view uh, and dig deep into Hamlet, deep character, paying an extra attention to every single word uh, mm -hmm. he uttered in the play. Understand okay. the understanding Hamlet uh, will definitely be challenged and whatever I will uh, think I came up with uh, will also be uh, debatable. Thank you. So, but look here, notice how he's saying that we need to focus more on Hamlet's thoughts. Next, with Sam, are you there? 
Yes, yes, I am. So uh, uh, that's why the scenario of Hamlet can be played by different sorts of characters. Uh, I like the I like about it that Hamlet can be played in different sorts uh, of characters depending on the producer of the play itself. It can be played as uh, as uh, a mad person. It could be a comic play, and comic? it and also uh, I, it can. I don't think comic is is too extreme with Sam. But if you want to deconstruct the whole play, comic maybe. Yeah. Still, I don't uh, read the whole play to decide. We'll see. Yeah, we'll see. Thank you very much. Yes, yes. Nesma. Maryam, one sentence. Are you there? Yes, I am. Quickly, hurry up. OK. Hurry up. I am just looking for the sense. Okay, uh, this mysterious and its riddles, says Mac, seems to be built into Hamlet, and suggests man in his bafflements, moving in darkness uh, on a rampart between two worlds, unable, unable to reject or uh, quit or quite uh, accept. Okay. Okay. I, I felt I felt interested in this in this quote. Uh, because I kept remembering the mysterious opening that raised many questions and wonders in my mind uh, while reading uh, his uh, his quotes. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, Omar, Safi, are you there? Got our car under Safi. Asma, Abu Rabia. Is Asma there? Dina, Zaharna. No, Dina. Uh, Raid Hillis, are you there? Yes. Con, can you read one sentence? It's only one sentence I caught. Uh, the most popular play in our language. I like it because uh, it's not only in the English uh, literature, it's famous, but in all literature. When I search on YouTube, I found uh, many people from different places discussing and analyzing the play and speak about it. Okay, thank you. So this is global and timeless. Arijal Masharawi, where are you? Here. Um, you can make of the play Hamlet and the, prot the protagonist to pretty much what you will, whether you are a play girl or reader, critic or director, actor. Or I, I, I really... Uh, want to know how can I be Hamlet though and how Hamlet can be me and mm. that's why I love this quote very much. Okay, I like your, your point also. Diana, are you there? No, Diana, okay. Uh, Mahmoud, are you there, Mahmoud Mushtaha? No, Mahmoud. Uh, Reem? One sentence, Reem. Uh, yes. Uh, so Bloom said, um, there is so much to say about Hamlet. No matter how much you say, there is always more. Its layers seem endless. Uh, we have no choice but to permit Shakespeare and his Hamlet everything because neither has a rival. Uh, so I like this because um, even more than 400 years of writing Hamlet, there, there always will be people who are studying and uh, uh, discussing more points about Hamlet. Um, and he believes that there won't be a, a rival to this uh, masterpiece written by Shakespeare. Okay, thank you very much. Sarah, are you there? Aina Sarah Dirawi. Okay. Russia. No, Russia. Ahmed, Dadir. One sentence, Ahmed. Uh, yes, doctor. I, I can't see my, yes. Uh, Natural say the pleasure of a tragedy. Uh, like while searching about uh, Hamlet, uh, about the critics' opinions and what they said about Hamlet, I found most of them like criticizing him more than praised him. Uh, I believe that like 
the highly critical thing is absolutely successful. So I really like what uh, Nacho said and the powerful image that he used in portraying Shakespeare's Hamlet. But uh, the play, Ahmad, doesn't consist of 30. What is this? The play doesn't consist of uh, 30. Uh, is, this, is this about Hamlet? It is the longest play of Shakespeare with 30,000 uh, lines. No, we said 4,000 lines, 4,000 lines, not 30. I don't know where this number, can you double check this later okay. on? Nahil? Okay, I will. Is Nahil there? Can you read? Isra? Where is Isra Bidwan? Yes, I'm here. Go on. Mm, I like Shakespeare created it in serious and therefore it's for verse successive, for a verse and never roughly. I like this quote because there is always mysterious in Shakespeare and there's always a even if you read it. Okay, so it is suggestive, it suggests things, it creates, brings new ideas every now and then. Rewa is family, thank you. Yes, yes, I'm here. One sentence. Okay, uh, once he said, there is in some place in the world, uh, right now there is someone or some people, some group, um, they read or they act a Hamlet. So um, I found this, Similar for what you did for us. I didn't uh, uh, hear you pretty well, but okay, for the sake of time, we'll end now with Yasmin. Yasmin posted a hundred million uh, ideas about uh, Hamlet. Choose one, read it, and tell us why you like this, Yasmin. What did we already ask Yasmin? Is, is, is Yasmin there? Are you there? I'm here, doctor. Okay. Yes. Um, uh, Nietzsche says Hamlet is not a man who thinks too much, uh, but rather uh, a man who thinks too well. And uh, I really like this because we don't have can, the... Can you say it again? Can you say it again? Nietzsche. Nietzsche. What does Nietzsche okay. say? Hamlet is not uh, a man who thinks too much, but uh, rather a man who thinks too well. Why do you like and, it? Uh, I like it because uh, in uh, our real uh, life, we don't have to judge about everything we're not sure. Okay. But, okay, I like this. Thank you very much. I like what Nietzsche said. Okay. We'll talk about this uh, later mm -hmm. on. Uh, uh, there are critics who blamed Hamlet's inaction for what went wrong in the play. So Hamlet was yes. a man of, uh, a man of thought. A man of yes. thinking. That's why we have to be or not to be, you know, that is the question, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh yeah. so, so Nietzsche was like, no, it's not that Hamlet was thinking too much, it's that he thinks too well. That is his 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 problem. Okay, I'll stop here. Uh, uh I'll post both uh, uh PowerPoint files on, on Moodle. Uh, the one about the quotes, you just have to know them. You don't have to study them. Unless you love an idea, you like it, you can use it in your own answers or uh, everything. But the main uh, issue is the PowerPoint I discuss uh, with you. Uh, thank you very much. It's been an hour already. Uh, and see you, inshallah, next week. Allah, take a laugh,